fact, I've had moments where I'm not even touching my dog. I'm, you know, I'm at a school, I'm addressing a bunch of kids and Cleo's there at a distance and we're looking into each other's eyes and I'm like, I'm so happy right now. <laughs> and you're happy right now and I can feel you being happy. And it, it, it sounds very spiritual, I mm -hmm. would say, yeah. you know what I'm saying, but... Um, it is. It is spiritual. It is spiritual. One hundred percent. It definitely is spiritual yeah. in some way. But that's what it is. It's a feeling of connectedness. Mm -hmm. uh, no conflict mm. is the word to put. Mm. Absolutely no conflict. No resistance. Yeah. You're in total sync. Yeah. Nothing that the dog is gonna do now is ever going to bother you, and nothing that you ever do is going to bother the dog. Having a dog at home is a dream for most of us. But not most of us do know what it really takes to take care of a dog the right way. The guest that I have on my episode today is Karthik, who's a dog expert, a trainer and a behaviorist. Now, Karthik has, over, has trained over 150 dogs in the last five years and he has been trained internationally by some of the best trainers that are known. One of the things that he loves working with is with human beings and dogs and helping them establish beautiful relationships. He's worked with several schools and old age homes where he could impact these people with his best friend, Cleo. In this episode, you will see what it truly takes to pursue a passionate journey with your four-legged animal friends. Watch the entire episode and do let me know what you feel about it. Hello, Karthik. Welcome to the Lale Dhanu show. It's so nice to have you here. Uh, how you been? I'm doing good, Lalit. Uh, thank you so much for having me here. It's an absolute pleasure. One of the things, Karthik, that I re really remember of is um, how I got to know you. Uh, because uh, back then when I had my uh, two puppies, I decided to uh, get somebody as a dog trainer. And then what happened was I kept asking people and I kept uh, getting trainer on trainer and then eventually my dogs were about seven months or eight months old and then I got your number from a friend who said, hey, I know this person and he can do the job. And once I spoke to that person, another, another three people recommended your name and the next thing I know is, uh, even though I didn't get you on board for training, we were doing the workshop together yeah. and man, it was uh, a fun, fun uh, time to remember. It really was. I, uh, you know, that was uh, Cleo was there back then. Yeah. And uh, you know, it was such a nice experience. We had uh, a good audience, and uh, <laughs> I, I think you just made made it so much more comfortable for me. You know, public speaking was <laughs> never uh -huh. a, a thing for me, and uh, that opened up so many more opportunities because after that we had you know the entire lockdown, and I was forced to do everything online. And which mm. is a which is kind of hard, right? When you're working with a dog, a Correct. living thing, and you have to do everything online. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean that kind of prepared me in in some way or the other because uh, after doing that, I was a lot more confident addressing mm -hmm. groups of people. So I was able to do online webinars, workshops, and all that. So it was a good start. Fantastic, yeah, uh, Karthik. I think you know we gain from experience, yeah. and as you gain from that experience, you become better at it. And uh, one of the things that I really know that you're very, very good at is handling dogs, your experience with dogs, and most importantly, your understanding of them. Because um, how dogs are portrayed out there today, I feel it's it's a little different to how it actually is yeah. because uh, they say a dog is just like a human being the dog is supposed to be treated a certain way and all of these things but uh, as I had deeper conversations with you multiple number of times about dogs about nutrition I only understood that our perception is so wrong uh, as to how this uh, you know uh, friend or animal or uh, another being should be taken care of. So how did you get into this whole process of loving dogs, Karthik? Uh, that's so true, uh, Lalit. I think uh, for me, um, I never imagined that I would be, you know, uh, in this profession, you know, as okay. a full-time profession. Uh, for me, it started off when I was a kid in school. I, I actually was scared of dogs, believe it or not. Oh, okay. <laughs> when I was a kid. <laughs> and uh, I remember, you know, we had a home in Chennai and uh, there was this little uh, spits, Indian spits. The neighbor had one and she would bring the dog over and I would sit on the window. I would like grab onto the window pane uh, and that's how scared I was. Uh, but somewhere along the way, I don't know where that shift happened. Uh, I'm, I'm really not, probably my memories not working but somewhere along the way I started to develop an affinity to them. I was a shy kid, 
I was a little introverted, uh, struggled to make conversations. So I would start feeding dogs when I was in school. I would feed all the street dogs in school. Uh, I remember I named this one dog Jam because I used to feed her butter, bread, butter and jam because that's <laughs> what my mom would pack for me. And, and it started from there and, and, and became into an obsession. Like every dog I saw on the street, I wanted to feed them. I was desperate to get a pet home uh -huh. and I would beg my parents, but uh, they didn't allow me. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah, from there, I think eventually I got Cleo home uh, when I was in the 10th or the 11th grade. And uh, my God, and then, it, then everything changed. You know, um, initially I I was also a dog lover. I had absolutely no idea, but uh, somewhere inside, I um, for me it it also mattered how the dog perceived me, mm. right? It wasn't just a matter of you know me hugging the dog, my pet, and all that. I was I really wondered. You know, I know the dog shows love, but is the dog really understanding what I'm trying to say? And I and I really wanted to build a sort of a a language. Right? I you know I grew up watching cartoons <laughs> where uh, you know people would talk to the animals and stuff like that and it was something that I, I, I always wanted to do and I think that's where it started from there I started observing them a lot more a lot deeper uh, more keenly then I did a couple of courses and uh, started to understand it uh, you know by the books and yeah the, the, that's great I just want to stop you there and ask um, when did this, okay, now not when, how did you get into this upper level of development? Like first it began as a passion. Yeah. Then you started getting a little more serious when you said courses yes. and that's where you're upskilling yourself or you're trying to move on to the better part of learning. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how did that transition happen about and how did your parents uh, <laughs> react to such uh, diversions from studies? Uh, so it was always a, uh, it was a part-time profession for me, you know, I started off dog walking okay, without, wow. without any qualification whatsoever. <laughs> I was the cheapest dog walker uh, in the complex and uh, so everyone was like, oh, it's just this kid, he wants to walk our dogs, let's, let's pay him a little bit. And it was pocket money for me. From there, I started to train the dogs myself, watching YouTube videos and watching Cesar Milan and whatnot. And uh, somewhere along the way, I felt I wasn't able to help them as much as I wanted to. And okay. that's where I wow. decided to do a course. Mm -hmm. But even when I did my course, n never did I imagine that I would be doing it full time. So my parents were like, okay, you know, just like a music class or maybe he wants to join. <laughs> he wants to join a dog training course. I mean, how bad can it be? <laughs> but it's only a few months and a few years down the line, they realized that, hey, uh, you know, I made that decision of saying... Uh, I don't want engineering and I want to get into this full time. <laughs> so that was a big uh, shock to them and for, for you know, all my friends. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure that that shock is uh, very common in the Indian household, especially really when is. there's a template or a format that you have to follow and everybody is thinking that you're getting there and all of a sudden, hey, ma, I want to be a dog trainer. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't be the most welcoming sound, I guess. Yeah. Now, Karthik, in this whole process, uh -huh. um, did you face any difficulty or was it easy for your parents to acknowledge the fact? Uh, and then you also said you started making money, right? For you to get into this profession, what was the first uh, line of work you did with dogs, like as soon as you got out from college? Um, so the first line of work, obviously I started off with dog walking, but um, I would train dogs. I mean, I, I would take the dogs out for a walk and I'd practice whatever I learned off a, maybe a YouTube video or what I learned online. Uh, but once I did a couple of courses and I was done with college, uh, I did have a certification. So I did have a know-how. I, I did know certain techniques and how to do that. And uh, that's where I actually, you know, I would, uh, I would, uh, you know, approach people walking their dogs and say, hey, are you looking for a trainer? Because I'm a trainer. And I would just, I, I wasn't shy to advertise myself at that point. And people would see me with my dog, Cleo, and they'd say, hey, who trained your dog? And I said, I trained my dog. <laughs> oh, can you help us? Of course I can. And that's where it all started. Um, mm. I wasn't too focused on what I was charging initially uh, because, I mean, I just did it because I loved it. And someone said, they won't take you seriously until you charge. <laughs> so I did that. And uh, yeah, I, after that, um, once I decided to get into it as a full-time profession, I had to prove to my parents because the, the primary concern that, you know, any parents have is uh, how are you going to make a living out of it? Correct. And, and now you've got out of engineering, you have a job. I did have a job at 
uh, at a decent uh, company and I had a decent pay and all of that. And I say that, no, I want to do this. So they were really concerned. So I had to prove it to them, right? So I actually took about a month or two where uh, I was taking up a lot of training sessions and I was going all out with it. And I had to make them realize that, see, this works as well. It doesn't always have to be that standard correct uh, thing. And I think with what you said, there's something very profound. Because today, um, we might not be the greatest at what we do, but anything great starts with the first step. And you said that, you know, before anybody approached you for training, you trained your own dog, yeah. right? And And the same thing even with my profession, sometimes I feel is, people ask me, Lalit, how are you so comfortable on stage? Or I want to speak like you. I'm not the best, but I'm, I know I'm good. But the thing is, before I trained people, I trained myself, right? So I always begin to have a successful career. You got to train your dog first in order Definitely. to become a good dog trainer out there. Definitely. Right? Definitely. Have your own experiences, have your own understanding, your own introspection moments yeah. in that whole experience so that now it translates to another higher level. Yeah. Uh, so I think that is very important. What do you think, Karthik? No, th that really is because uh, even today, you know, uh, I think dog training is uh, becoming quite popular as a profession. You know, uh, I've had a lot of people approach me and say that, hey, how did you get into this? Uh, but for a lot of people right now, you know, you just start off, you do a course hmm. and uh, you've understood that, hey, this is what dog training is, this is what the learning theory is, this is what classical conditioning is, and you start training dogs. But uh, what happens there is you've not had that uh, that up-close experience, Correct. right? So it's, it's actually a sincere advice that I give to any trainer or any upcoming trainer, any young trainers out there, I tell them, hey, you know, Get yourself a dog and start working with that dog because that's where you're going to build that confidence and you're going to, uh, before you start preaching it, you're going to know that it works for yourself. I think it makes a lot of sense, right? Like, I mean, if you know how to take care of your own dog, you can pretty much put that effort on, you know, the know-hows. Uh, and then you can continue with your own learning journey. And then as I'm sure as you've traveled years into that profession, you've only learned more things about different dogs, about their personalities. Now, speaking of this, Karthik, I want to understand... From the outside, having a dog at home looks fantastically great. Yeah. But today, a lot of people get dogs home not knowing the kind of responsibility and they only see the cool factor of having a dog and the dog sharing its love. Uh, what kind of awareness or what do you want to say to people uh, who want to get a pet home or who want to get a dog home? What's the easiest way to quench that thirst but still know what's my limit? Yeah, no, this is, this is, a, this is something that really has to be brought to light because... Uh, especially with the lockdown and I think in the last year and a half, the number of dogs that have come into household is, households, you know, family households is really shot up. And a lot of these people have gotten dogs because, let's say, my, my daughter wanted a dog as a birthday gift. Or they've just said, hey, we've got a lot of time now, let's just get a dog. Uh, you don't stop to consider, uh, you know, all the things that the dog might require afterwards, right? After the lockdown, when you start going back to work, this puts a tremendous amount of stress on the dog. The dog's used to having you around all the time, right? Uh, and similar, you know, you get the dog for a child and you expect the child to take, uh, take care of the dog and that doesn't work because uh, for a child, it's going to be just play, play, play. Uh, whereas the responsibility, uh, responsibility involved is quite high. Um, you know, it's not just about uh, getting the dog home, giving him a shelter and giving him food. You have to make sure that he adjusts well into your lifestyle. You have to make sure that he doesn't come as a hindrance to your daily activities or you don't come as a hindrance to his basic requirements. And this, this is a lot of effort. I mean, it sounds yeah. very easy and a lot of people are not ready for it. Right? Very so, true. Uh, I think people should really speak to professionals, to behaviorists, to trainers well before they get a dog because very often you may not even be ready to have a dog at home and you might just might be an impulsive decision. You don't mm -hmm. want to get the dog and later on be at a, uh, you know, a fix as to uh, what to do afterwards. So uh, definitely awareness is needed. And uh, another message, you know, for people out there is that um, when you select a dog, I mean, uh, 
it, it, it takes, I'd say it takes the entire, this is saying, right? It takes a village to raise a child. It's very true for the dog. You know, you may be getting the dog for one member of the house, but it takes the entire family. And it's a lot of commitment, a lot of time, a lot of effort, especially the first six, seven months is a lot. So unless you're willing to give that kind of time and effort, that kind of attention, it's best you maybe just uh, foster a dog or maybe spend some time at a shelter to mm. get a feel of what it's like. Correct. And then uh, think about, you know, making the decision. Yeah, I think that makes so much sense and I think that way you can also volunteer at so many yeah, sh shelters. Yeah, yeah. Number one, you're contributing back to that dog's welfare. Exactly. There's somebody that you, you could care for. Yeah. Um, to, and most importantly, you get a hands-on experience of what it goes. Mm -hmm. uh, because I always tell people like, you know, everything that has a good side to, in life will also have a side that you have to deal with. Wh which is, if the dog's extremely cute, uh, it's a puppy, then it's going to tear everything apart and it's of going course. to poop exactly when you cleaned the first set of it totally <laughs> right so i think these are situations that uh, actually break the ice for people who've never had a dog yeah. now karthik uh, moving on yeah. let's get back to a little bit of where you were so you said you got into dog training uh, and i'm sure that's how i that's how your name even came across to me saying hey he's a brilliant trainer somebody who understands the dog at a very good level and it was not just one or two it was a lot of people telling me right so from an outsider's perspective, when I look at it, it says, hey, Karthik's found his passion. Karthik is, is sure killing it. And then I met you uh, at your own store that you had. Uh, you had your you had a big setup. Yeah. There was grooming. There was a vet who was coming in. And all of these things were happening. Um, then, of course, the pandemic happened and all of these things happened. So, Karthik, what, you've been in the profession for four, five years now? Five years. Five, five years. years. Five years now. So... Are you continuing the same way or do you, uh, is there some realizations that you had over the last few years? Uh, that's a very interesting question because, uh, you know, there, there sure have been a lot of changes and realizations that have happened in the last mm -hmm. uh, six, seven months. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, of course, you know, when I first got into this, I was, I was very driven. Mm -hmm. I was desperate to get into, you know, this business. And I would say that, okay, you know, I've decided to let go of engineering. I'm under heavy pressure. Mm -hmm. to make a living out of you know the dog business so let me just get in and that's what uh, made me get into you know uh, you know i we started a pet store a vet clinic a grooming center and it was all growing great uh, but somewhere along the way you know i i feel this happens to a lot of us we tend to uh, lose track of what we're really passionate about and i think that happened to me through the lockdown um, i reached a point to where i said that okay you know i'm running a pet store it's good it's doing great as a matter of fact, uh, you know, everything is going perfect, but I, I, I don't feel aligned to what I'm doing. You know, when I first started this, when I first started off walking dogs and I started training dogs, there was a certain zing that I had. I would step into a session with, with a certain energy and I found that energy was lacking, right? Mm. When I was with the store and with the clinic and all of that, it was an added responsibility. It was like a weight to bear, which I never felt starting off. So uh, in the last couple of months, you know, after a lot of, um, I would say, churning in my own mind, uh, I decided that, you know, I will step away from the, the pet store, the vet clinic, the business side of things, actually, and, and, and actually uh, pursue what I'm really passionate about, which is working with families, working with dogs, working with people, because that's what gave me immense amount of gratification. And I remember, you know, even when we spoke earlier, um, I mentioned to you that I can go seven days a week doing this without a single break because I absolutely love it. But then very quickly, uh, I wasn't able to do that. And it made me wonder, do I really love what I'm doing? Mm. And, uh, and, and that's where I said that, okay, maybe the whole pet store and, you know, the business side of things is not for me. I need to be aligned to what I'm doing. And, and I have decided to kind of step away from that side of the business and uh, get into what I'm truly passionate about, which is working with dogs, understanding dogs, helping people. And uh, I am in the works of starting something uh, fresh, something unique in that direction. So uh, that, that's where I'm at right now. Mm -hmm. And all this has pro probably happened in the last six months. So it's, nice. been, it's been a roller coaster. Man, and I think uh, such roller coasters are very very important yeah. in our life and uh, I for one can definitely agree with the kind of situation that you've gone through in the last six months yeah. because I think these are deep situations and what happens is when you've when there's so much weight thrusted into your shoulder I feel Karthik is 
somewhere there's that space that you've created already yeah. right you've created that kind of space to accommodate business grooming veterinary guy checking up operations logistics <laughs> stock has come all of these things you've done yeah. so much yeah, you're yeah. gassed out yeah. but the good part is when the gas clears there's so much so of much space of now and if you take all of that space and now put it in one direction yeah. you have more to fill yeah. right and i think i've been through that phase and i can say it from my own experience that you know when when we started more than textbook my company we understood that we wanted to train but as we got into the training part of things we understood that hey training requires a lot more other things it needs a brand it needs a business team it needs a tech team it needs so many things right um as you go further then you ask yourself hey is it really where i want it to be is it was it for the love of business or was it for the love of speaking right i think it's just that thin line of margin that each of us have to understand we'll always face in our careers definitely because uh, a, a few weeks ago i i spoke to a few people uh, who were doing their own line of business who quit companies made a change over in their lives and i said hey i'm going through this is this natural because i feel a little alienated yeah. they said this is absolutely natural yeah. what you are going to do in right now is find a way through it yeah. that's your next up in the game so i feel these transitions are very important and uh, man i know for a fact that now what you want to focus is more than that business or that money making side of it you want to build a beautiful relationship with the the pet and the owner because i think that's the most um, what do you say sincere uh, unapologetic beautiful relationship that there, there is. Well, is are you on that uh, mission that, uh, kartik that's exactly it i mean my mission right from the moment you know i i uh, I, i think i mean i have to mention cleo over here mm -hmm. uh, so cleo came into my life when i was in about the 10th or the 11th grade mm -hmm. and uh, i experienced something very special with her you know this is something that uh, Uh, i mean it's hard to describe into words but uh, the kind the impact that she's had on my life is incredible and uh, i i i was i really wanted to share that feeling with other pet parents as well but when i started looking at how people were with their dogs i i i felt that you know they're constantly blaming the dog for things they're saying hey my dog's doing this they're complaining about the dog the dog is sad the dog's not getting what they need and i said i really need to fix this because there's something beautiful and i see that every time i go to train a dog you know there is a little bit i learn from every dog that i train but but there are these moments where the the owner lets their guard down and the dog lets his guard down and and you see something so tender and so beautiful and that is so immensely gratifying for me and I, my entire goal is for people to experience this on a larger scale even people that don't have dogs you know when we were doing animal assisted therapy with cleo that's also something i really enjoyed because i was able to uh, help children with uh, you know special children with uh, you know experiencing that same feeling that i had gone through so that really is my goal and this whole pet store and all of that was really draining and the first thing as you said you know when we were talking about opening space when uh, you suddenly feel that there's so much of space that's exactly what i felt you know um, initially i was a little uh, overwhelmed with all the changes but uh, you know i i took a month long break and i said you know i need to get things into perspective but after that month i am so free so relaxed i am almost rejuvenated with a new kind of energy right i i feel like i'm back to the first old kartik that is looking forward to every single uh you know dog that he sees every single uh, family uh that he gets to work with so i'm back to that and and that's that's an amazing feeling i feel like i can supercharge my way up to whatever i want to do and money uh, you know since we spoke about money as well i think money will come if there's one thing i've really understood it's that um uh, whatever i've done i've not initially at least whatever i've done was not looking for money right and i just did it with absolute absolute involvement dedication passion and that shines through when mm -hmm. i work with a family and that comes through they are more than willing so every family that supported me and uh, you know helped me get to where i am they've seen that involvement that i have and the world will see it as well and mm -hmm. when they start to see it of course they're going to be the money will come money is going to be a small part of mm -hmm. 
the the process. Ultimately, we we want to feel happy doing yeah. whatever it is we're doing. So true. I think I think very well said there. Um, and, and once you start liking it, yeah. and when you said when you do it with absolute heart and yeah. you're putting yourself out there yes, in a hundred percent. There is no way why money will not follow you, right? Yeah. Right, I, and you're good at your work. People are recognizing. People are talking about it. Like just like how you start getting the very fact that I met you is because people spoke well about you, yeah. right? And the fact that I came to you was also an opening of some point of making money. Yes, directly or indirectly, it, it's opened those doors, right? Yeah. I must agree with you on that, Karthik. So, uh, you you also said I wanted owners to feel how me and Cleo felt. Yeah. I want to know that feeling too now <laughs> because the people on camera yeah. uh, would be wondering what is that tender feeling like. I know it's it can be very hard to put into words, yeah, but yeah. if you can actually synthesize it to the best of your ability, how would you do so? Um, okay. So I don't know. I mean, you've watched the movie Avatar, right? Yes, I have. And you know, uh, <laughs> there's this. A place where he's got his hair, and then yeah. he just links it with the uh, the flying creature, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. he feels a link. Uh, that that's the closest example that I can give you. You mm. know, uh, it's it's a sort of a sink that I mm -hmm. felt with her, a sort of a link. Mm -hmm. It's I, I know what she's gonna think a couple of seconds mm. from now. She knows what I'm gonna think a couple of seconds from now, and it's a beautiful feeling. And I think this is something we we see in human relationships as well, but. Given how things are playing out, human relationships have started to, uh, you know, we struggle to form strong human relationships Correct. with Correct. how things are playing out. And which is why more and more people want dogs in their life. And dogs can help us experience this once again. It's, uh, it's a feeling of connectedness, I would say. And um, uh, I don't know. I mean, I just, it's very, very hard to put into words because... Mm -hmm. Uh, I've had moments of it. I've had moments where I'm not even touching my dog. I'm, you know, I'm at a school. I'm addressing a bunch of kids and Cleo's there at a distance and we're looking into each other's eyes. And I'm like, I'm so happy right now. <laughs> and you're happy right now. And I can feel you being happy. And it, it, it sounds very spiritual, I mm -hmm. would say. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. But um, it is. It is spiritual. It is spiritual. One hundred percent. It definitely is spiritual yeah. in some way. But that's what it is. It's a feeling of connectedness. Mm -hmm. Uh, no conflict mm. is the word to put. Mm. Absolutely no conflict, no resistance. Yeah. You're in total sync. Yeah. Nothing that the dog is going to do now is ever going to bother you. And nothing that you ever do is going to bother the dog. Ah. That is what. And I've tried to employ that to my human relationships as well. Mm -hmm. It's definitely a lot harder. But uh, I mean, I mean, there is a lot we can learn from there and apply here. So yeah, that's man, what it is. Man, I think uh, you put it out really well. Yeah. Uh, I think um, it's just, I think it's that flow. It is. Right, right. That that spiritual part about it is to flow together through yeah. the ups and downs, and you ex you know exactly what the other person's totally. feeling, and you're mirroring each other's emotions. Yes. I think that is. Uh, I think it is it is by far a very powerful experience that many people would feel, and that's why they, you know. The dogs at large are man's best friend. Definitely. Uh, right? Uh, so, I mean, Karthik, brilliant. So, Karthik, before I let you go, I want to do a very fun... I don't do this. Okay, so this is something very impromptu I want to do. Uh -huh. uh, because uh, a lot of people have... Even if they don't have a dog, they have interest in dogs. Yeah, yeah. So, this is for everybody who is watching. Okay. So, I just want to throw random questions based on dogs. Okay. 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 So, uh, you answer them like a rapid fire. Okay, short answers. Short answers, as short as possible. Okay. I, I, and this is just very impromptu that I'm doing on the show right now. Okay. 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 So, for example, I'll you'll also I'll give you a few dog breeds. Mm -hmm. You tell me, uh, like you know, uh, what do you say? It's it. Tell me some some fun fact about it. Like maybe it's about temperament, or you can describe it in one word. What do you Absolutely. feel like? Cool. Yeah. Okay. So, Karthik, which do you think is the smartest dog amongst all dogs? Indies? Yeah, why? Uh, driven by instinct, nature's design, uh, always the best. Awesome. Right? I, I wish this was an interview question if I could dig down into that. But <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, describe the dog boxer in one word. Energetic. Energetic, okay. Um, if there was one dog that was super, let's say, um, cunningly smart, what dog would that be? I feel like I'm going to repeat answers. Indies? Hey, indies again. <laughs> um, apart from Indies, which yeah. do you think is the toughest dog? Toughest? 
Yeah. Um, beagles. Beagles. Yeah. Okay. Why? They've got a mind of their own. Okay. And uh, they can be quite headstrong. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I've seen a lot of them. What kind of household should have shepherds? Like, what's the prerequisite? Independent home. Mm -hmm. um, maybe an estate mm. or a big farmhouse. Mm -hmm. A place that can harness the dog's instinct. Mm -hmm. There's a shepherd in there, so okay. you want to be able to give an outlet for that shepherd. Which dog is the laziest dog? Human beings are a lot lazier than dogs, actually, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> which dog? Uh, probably uh, a, maybe a Mastiff. A Mastiff. Not uh, all Mastiffs, though, but some okay. Mastiffs. Uh, what's the actual purpose of a Great Dane? Like, what was it built for? Uh, so a Great Dane was just bred to be a very big dog, also mm -hmm. has roots from the Mastiff category. Okay. So they were guard dogs, they were bred to look scary and big, but uh, I think the breeding system has made them abnormally big, uh -huh. so much that it's compromised their functionality and uh, even their health to some extent. But yeah, that's what they were. Hmm. Five dogs that shouldn't be kept in an Indian household because of its climate. Because of climate, um, I'm going to have a lot of uh, backlash for these answers, <laughs> but anyway, I'm going to... It's the go. truth. Yeah, so it's um, a St. Bernard, Alaskan Malamute, Siberian Huskies, I know there are a lot of you out there, but <laughs> but that's okay. Uh, a Husky, yes, it's high maintenance, not really apt for this. And I think these are the top three. Uh, apart from this, uh, I don't think the other exotic breeds, you have them here in any case. Mm. So I think I would, I'll just stick to these three. Okay. Who's the, which is the naughtiest breed? Naughtiest? Um, I see naughty as a good thing. Uh -huh. So for me, uh, naughtiest breeds would be the, uh, I've come across some naughty Cocker Spaniels. So for oh. me, it's a cocker, cocker but uh. I don't know. I mean, it, it can vary. <laughs> yeah. In my experience, Cocker Spaniels are quite naughty. Oh, can I also ask you on other things of small dogs? Why do small dogs, why are they so active compared to the big ones? Um, so, so again, this, this goes into breeding and I think uh, you, you'd be surprised, right? A lot of smaller dogs actually have longer lifespans, mm. right? And, and a lot of them have this metabolic rate, which is a lot quicker. And, and since they're small and uh, they're pampered so much uh, in comparison to the big ones, they're always picked up... Uh, when you do put them down, they tend to be all over the place. <laughs> That's probably why. <laughs> wow. Um, what? Why were Irish setters bred? Uh, Irish setters were bred as gun dogs, similar to golden retrievers, Labradors. Mm -hmm. uh, they were bred to help the hunter in the hunt, mm. right? Uh, so each of them, retrievers were bred for retrieving. Similar to that, you had spaniels, which were bred for flushing. Uh, setters were also bred for a similar task, where they mm. had to kind of, you know, uh, figure out where the bun, you know, the bird was shot, and kind of bring them back. So they're similar to retrievers. They're nice. gun dogs essentially. Yeah. I, and all in all, I feel each dog was, like you said, uh, was bred for a purpose. Yes. And yeah. that purpose, if you, I think that is so uh, intriguing when you start looking at it, and you it know is. why they were bred. And uh, my God, that involves a whole other, another level of science and interest really that go, goes around it. So, Karthik, one last question. Uh, we'll fi we are done with the rapid fire, but before I let you go, uh, where do you see yourself in the next few years? Uh, so, in the next few years, um, I see myself um, making a real change mm -hmm. in people's lives, in people, you know, uh, through dogs. And uh, which is why, you know, I have, I've got quite a funny name for the venture that I'm about to start. Okay. And I think it's, it, it's safe to announce it over here. <laughs> go, um, go for so, it. So I've named it uh, Dattatreya uh -huh. Divine Dogs, which is a funny name. I had a lot of people say, what's wrong with you? What kind of a name is that? Uh -huh. But uh, this, this comes from um, Hindu mythology, obviously. And uh, Dattatreya is supposed to be a god uh -huh. who, who transmits knowledge uh -huh. through four dogs. Right? Okay. in the form of four Vedas. Now, although the whole Hindu mythology part isn't important to me, what I'm trying to do is just that. And I'm trying to help people um, reach a different place through their dogs. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's a combination of science as well as there is an element of 
spirituality as well. Mm -hmm. It's something that I um, I've been thinking about getting into for a while now. But mm -hmm. yes, it's safe to say that uh, I, I will be doing that, and I want to impact as many lives as possible. Mm -hmm. I, I want to change the way people see dogs, and I want uh, I want dogs to change the way they see people. Wow. More importantly. Wow. Because that's definitely needed. We're, <laughs> we're much better than what they think we are. Man, uh, I think uh, the way you sound with it, the way you're so positive about yeah. it, I'm 100% sure it's going to happen. I really hope uh, so. I, 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 I think uh, uh, the way you're moving uh, with your passion, Karthik, um, is not just great for you, but for g it's it's definitely great for the people around around you and uh, i hope more people can look at your journey your learnings and definitely impact not just themselves but even dogs uh, our four legged uh, friends around us in a big big manner so thank you so much for coming on to the show it's been a pleasure like always to interact with you i for one have learned so much from you Thank you so much, Lalit. It, it's my pleasure as well. I mean, it's always, uh, <laughs> it, you make it so easy you know, for us to have this conversation. Man, man so, uh, you. you are great by all means and I think it was fantastic. That's what made it great. Thank you so much, Karthik. And until next time, man. Thank yes. you. All right. Thank you so much.